Um, welcome. Thank you for attending our forum on the uh, master planning process at Fort Williams. I'm Bill Nickerson, chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. And uh, I would ask each of the members here to please introduce themselves, giving their names and addresses. I'm Frank Butterworth. I live at 21 Macaulay Road, and I'm the secretary of the commission. I'm Maureen McCarthy. I live at 16 Stony Brook Road. I'm Lise Pratt. I live at 32 Wood Road. Aaron Grady. I live at 2 Emerald Way. Dan Chase, 26 Stony Brook Road. And I live at 3 Thompson Road, which I neglected to mention. Throughout this process, we've been working with Mitchell & Associates, which is uh, a Portland landscape design firm. And John Mitchell, Bob Metcalf, and Betsy Poulin are here tonight. And uh, after I finish the introductory remarks, they'll be giving a presentation um, on the screen behind us about the, the various facets of what we're doing, um, the process, and some of the recommendations. Uh, John, you, I'll just introduce you now. John Mitchell, Bob Metcalf, and Betsy Poulin standing at the podium. And I see Jim. Jim Walsh is uh, a counselor here, Mike McGovern, and Bob Malley, who's director of our Public Works Department. Thank you. Uh, just to give a little bit of background, the comprehensive plan of the town requires that there be an update of the master plan of Fort Williams every seven years. And the last master plan was completed in 2003. Rather than start from scratch with uh, beginning again with a brand new master plan, we've made the decision in the interest of both saving some time and some money to update the 2003 plan. Some of the things in that plan still haven't been accomplished. And what we're trying to do is uh, take a look at those recommendations and then update them to uh, today's needs and, and today's uses within the fort. Um, the purpose of the plan is to, uh, is to do four things. Um, number one, to reaffirm the overall vision, goals, and objectives that were established in the 2003 plan, to continue to guide the town and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission in its deliberations and establish a framework for the decision making going forward, to identify new issues and concerns as well as future needs and improvements, and to suggest recommendations and propose design concepts for various projects identified as part of the process. Now, the underlying guiding principle that we've been working with is the town council policy statement for Fort Williams uh, from 1976. In 1970, the town uh, turned down an urban renewal plan um, and decided to keep the fort as a, uh, a natural resource. And in 1976, there was a formal policy statement established which says that Fort Williams is a unique community resource which has irreplaceable scenic, natural, and historical qualities. As such, it should be dedicated to predominantly park, recreational, and cultural uses, which uses preserve or enhance or are otherwise fully compatible with its unique qualities and which uses, and which uses are within the financial capabilities of the town. And before we really embarked upon the master plan update, we reaffirmed among ourselves as a commission that we, felt, we still felt that this was an appropriate guiding principle. There are six goals um, for this planning process. Uh, number one is to promote safe access, circulation, and easy wayfinding for park visitors. Number two, to enhance visitors' awareness and understanding of park resources. Three, to preserve and protect the park's natural resources. Four, to maintain and strengthen the park's historic identity. And number five, to facilitate implementation of compatible uses within the park. Number six is to establish a, a sustainability plan to maintain the quality and enjoyment of the park. And as we're all aware, um, sustainability is critical. Uh, money is um, an important ingredient in not only maintaining, but uh, trying to enhance uh, what it is the park is. So at this point, I'll turn it over to John Mitchell, um, who will 
go through some of the processes that um, we've been working through and provide Thank some you, recommendations. Bill. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, the first slide is, as you can see, it's an aerial photo of the 90-acre fort, and we included this just to orient you. We, this presentation is going to use a lot of terms that uh, refer to the different areas of the fort as well as uh, some of the features or elements of the fort. So I'm just going to very quickly uh, go over um, to orient you and to give some context. Um, this is the, the main There we go, Vince. Um, this is the main entrance to the fort. This is the main access road. Uh, the meadow is the large open green area to the left. Uh, this is Ship Cove. Guarded Mansion is, is located here. Um, as you curve up the hill, uh, this is the cliffside site, which is the first site of the Arboretum, which is currently under construction. Uh, you may have noticed as you continue on Ocean Road, uh, this is the parade ground, the bleachers. You continue down, uh, this is the central parking area, battery blare, of course, uh, pull and headlight. Uh, this is the green, which is the large open field next to the ocean. As you continue around, uh, this is the multi-purpose field, the Southwest Preserve, as it's called. Uh, this is the former entrance located uh, next to the pond. Uh, the parade grounds I mentioned, the upper parade grounds located here. Uh, so those are some of the, the primary uh, areas that we're going to be talking about this evening. Oh. <clears throat> um, just to give you an idea of the process that we're going through, um, you know, in to, to, uh, to develop or update a master plan, um, there's a very uh, specific process that, that we uh, normally follow. And it begins with the base map, uh, preparing the base map of the park. And we were very fortunate in that the town had just completed a, uh, an update of their survey which gave us very accurate information on all of the existing conditions within the park. Uh, the second is to review current documentation, reports and there are many, many uh, reports and studies that have been prepared uh, over the years. Uh, we have familiarized ourselves with all of those reports. Uh, we have reviewed thoroughly the 1990 and the 2003 master plan documents, identifying all of the recommendations that were outlined in those reports um, and to identify the ones that have been completed and the ones that have not been completed. Of course, we have spent several hours um, at the fort walking, photographing, inventorying, and analyzing uh, all of the existing conditions, the impacts on the, um, some of the current uses that, that have occurred. Uh, we have uh, we prepared a public survey questionnaire that was uh, posted on the website, and uh, Betsy uh, will um, review with you the, the results of that survey. Uh, we have conducted monthly meetings with the Advisory Commission. Uh, we have reached out to some of the special interest groups, such as the Arboretum Committee, uh, Friends of Battery Blair, etc. I've got a list of those on the following slide slide. Uh, we are right now conducting uh, a public informational meeting and after this meeting, after we receive feedback from the public, uh, we'll take all of the, um, all of the, the uh, input that we've received from the uh, special interest groups, from the public, from the questionnaire, and as well as some of the recommendations that we have formed um, to come up with a final set of recommendations and that will follow, be followed by the preparation of the final 2011 master plan update. Uh, 
some of the interested parties that we reached out to, and we had a special meeting with these groups, include the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, group uh, uh, interested in, in raising funds for the preservation um, of, of uh, the fort. Uh, the Portland Headlight uh, people are the ones in charge of the museum and the gift shop. The Friends of Battery Blair, Friends of Goddard Mansion, the Arboretum Steering Committee, uh, dog walkers and representatives from the Little League, Community Services, and School Athletic Department. Um, we prepared a, uh, a survey, as I mentioned, uh, Betsy prepared it, a list of questions. Uh, it was reviewed and approved by the Commission, and I'm going to let Betsy uh, go through this with you. So we um, posted a survey um, that was online from June 7th through July 22nd um, using SurveyMonkey. It was posted with a link through the town's website, and we also put some paper copies out um, at the town office and the library um, for those without internet access or who preferred to handwrite. And of this, this survey had 24 questions to solicit input about, um, about the park, you know, future future ideas, how they think it works right now. Um, now all these results have been posted on the town's website and also just for reference this PowerPoint presentation will be on tomorrow on the town's website so if you want to look at it there. So the, the survey we had um, 395 respondents, about 78 percent were Cape Elizabeth residents and the largest group um, was about ages 36 to 50, we were about 45 percent of the respondents. So for the results, um, I'll go through just briefly what some of these um, results were. There's a handout at the back of the room which um, better describes um, the results. Um, what do you like most about the park? Most people like the views and the access to the ocean, the ability to, to walk around in the park, um, the natural beauty, uh, the use of athletic use, um, the history of the site that it's well maintained, it's very friendly and ch um, to families and children. Um, this was a graph that says how, how do you use the park? Most of the people use the park for walking, sightseeing, passive recreation, and dog walking, picnicking. And of course there were a lot of people who filled in other responses to like, for, like using for tennis courts. Uh, for concerns for um, that people saw about the park um, that could maybe be addressed through this master plan or through other methods uh, were vandalism, um, vehicle speed, there's concern about um, the buses, the tour buses and the idling with the air quality, um, some safety along the cliff walk, uh, the condition of the bleachers, um, and better signage for the off-leash dog walking area. Um, items that, for the survey that relate with revenue generation, 78% um, of the respondents supported expanding opportunities to rent areas of the park. Um, some of those were just making additional parts of the park available or maybe constructing a second picnic shelter. There were a few, a few alternatives. Um, some of these expanded uses um, that might be um, in the park or just additions of existing features, um, the possibility of maybe having a farmer's market, more concerts or theater events, um, maybe have more drinking fountains available for both people and pets, public per permanent public restrooms, um, some people just like it the way it is, don't change anything, um, maybe to extend a pathway for the off-leash area to create a loop trail, more picnic tables. Um, some conflicts that people found were um, sometimes um, runners will be using the off-leash area, but they don't realize that it's an off-leash area, so dogs will you know, come up to them and surprise them. Um, that maybe better signage would help, help with that conflict. Um, some people thought there were too many tour buses, and some people didn't like the food vendors. Um, it was sort of a mix. And John will discuss a little bit more about the proposed recommendations um, based on our work with the Advisory Commission. Thanks, Betsy. Um, the next 
set of slides uh, we're calling proposed recommendations. Um, let me just review quickly before I get into this. The goals of the 2011 master plan update uh, include preparation, prepare a document that builds upon the foundation of the 2003 master plan, update previous documentation, identifies new issues and concerns and demands of the park, and to provide proposed recommendations. And uh, what we have done is to divide the proposed recommendations into 10 different categories, uh, A through J, um, which include vehicular circulation, pedestrian circulation, parking lot facilities, improved elderly and handicapped accessibility, safety concerns, restoration of eroded areas, potential improvement opportunities, restoration of existing structures and site features, ground use facilities, And finally, park maintenance. We'll get group, to group use, group use facilities <laughs> and park maintenance. Um, and in the, you know, there, I just want to say that um, the final report will include many, many uh, additional recommendations over and above what we're uh, showing you this evening. Uh, in the interest of time, I just, I wanted to just select a, a couple or two or three in each of these uh, 10 categories. So under vehicular circulation, um, a couple significant uh, recommendations include a roundabout at the entrance to Ship Cove parking area and uh, in, in, in an intersection improvement at the entrance to the overflow parking area. Uh, we were asked to take a look at this intersection um, this is the main access road coming in and turning uh, into the Ship Cove parking area. And as you can see, it's a fairly wide expanse of pavement. Um, it's not very well defined. It's a little difficult entering and exiting um, into the Ship Cove parking area. So we came up with a possible solution of a roundabout. Um, this is a roundabout, um, as, as most of you probably know, is a traffic um, uh, controlling device. It, it provides definition to the intersection. Um, it will slow traffic down approaching this intersection. Um, so the traffic would have to slow down to circulate around. Uh, it also provides a, a, a feature, a landscape feature that that can incorporate wayfinding and uh, a landscape focal point. The second area is the intersection uh, from the main access road, Ocean Road, uh, into the access road up to the uh, overflow parking area. And it's, this is a very difficult intersection as well. Um, and it's a very narrow intersection uh, to maneuver during, you know, family fun day and, and special events like that where there's a lot of uh, traffic uh, or a lot of parking in the overflow area. It's oftentimes it's very difficult to have two ways, uh, two way traffic in this area. So we came up with a possible solution to uh, bring the intersection out at a 90 degrees to Ocean Road. Um, and maneuver up and around and, and reconnect to the existing road in this fashion. Uh, the second category is pedestrian circulation and we've identified uh, there are five areas that we're going to show you um, in this category. The first, excuse me, go back. Oh yeah, um, the first is at Battery Keys. Um, Right now, there's just a, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, asphalt pavement, gravel surfaces. Um, is, there's no definition to any of the pedestrian circulation in this area. So we came up with just a very simple solution of a, a circular form um, that is in front of battery keys uh, with a lawn in the middle. 
And this dashed line, this bold dashed line, represents a future arboretum site. This is one of the 15 arboretum sites that uh, are being proposed as part of the arboretum project. Um, another area includes the area right at the turnaround. This, again, this is at the main access road. Um, and the current sidewalk ends in this location. And what you find are pedestrians, once they get off that sidewalk, they tend to walk in the roadway. And it's, it presents a, a, a safety hazard. And they walk on the roadway, as these two pedestrians are doing right now, until they reach this sidewalk. So uh, our solution would be to continue the sidewalk in this area, uh, provide a crosswalk, a raised sidewalk here to provide a little bit more separation um, from the roadway and another crosswalk until they reach the existing sidewalk here. Another area is to get, is getting people from Battery Knoll, um, this is where the flagpole is, across the street and up to Kitty, Kitty's Point, and this is where the interpretive panels are. So it's, it, you know, a very simple solution, provide a crosswalk, um, a pedestrian walk with a couple sets of stairs that would provide circulation up to Kitty's Point. We've also shown a walkway that would lead the pedestrian down to the picnic uh, shelter parking area. There are several, or not, not several, but there are a couple areas in the fort that are very heavily used um, that, as you can see, are worn paths. Uh, this path happens to be at the uh, former entrance, and uh, people park at the former entrance, and they, um, they circulate up in this area here. And this is probably not doing a lot of good to the, the roots of these trees also. So the idea would be to um, identify these areas and to, uh, um, you know, either, you know, find a different route so that they, they're not impacting on the existing trees. Um, and another possibility is, uh, this is the Southwest Preserve. This is used uh, very heavily by the dog walkers. Um, and right currently, the dog walkers walk around and the off-leash area uh, terminates at this point here, or here, I'm sorry. And there, there may be an opportunity to provide a loop connection beginning at this point, going through the Southwest Preserve and, and reconnecting back to um, this point. The next section is parking lot facilities. We've identified four different parking areas. Um, the first is Shipco parking area. Uh, currently, this is a dead-end configuration. There's no, uh, there are no provisions for people to turn around if the parking lot is full. Uh, when I took this photograph, it happened to be full, and this car, I watched this car uh, try to turn around, and he was like, he did a 10-point uh, maneuver trying to turn around. And this, believe it or not, this is, this is a, I mean, this happens frequently. I've seen it. Um, this parking lot is a very popular parking lot, especially during the peak season. Um, so uh, our solution to this would be to expand the parking area in this fashion. Um, it's sort of a cul-de-sac uh, design with additional parking spaces uh, circling around the cul-de-sac. Uh, cul uh, so it would provide a better uh, vehicular circulation as well as add additional parking spaces. Another area is the uh, parking area out on Shore Road. This accommodates uh, roughly 12 or 13 uh, cars. And um, so we were asked to take a look at this and our solution would be to, again, create a circular form uh, with either a raised landscaped um, circle or a flush area uh, that would accommodate the beach to beacon runners uh, as they approach the fort. Um, but this gives a little bit more definition uh, to the area. And we've also taken the, uh, the shore road pathway and to incorporate the shore, right, shore road pathway that, that begins in this area into the, the layout of the uh, parking area. 
Another area is the picnic shelter parking area. Um, this is just a, right now, it's a wide open expanse, a gravel surface parking area. It's uh, not very well defined. Um, automobiles park on either side. And the idea would be to uh, give it more definition, to pave it, uh, to stripe it, to put a couple landscaped islands on either end. And then the final parking area is uh, the maintenance building slash children's playground parking area. Currently, it's, it's um, you know, cars just sort of park haphazardly. Um, there's, no, there's no striping or clear definition circulation of, of roadways. So we've done a, just a quick layout of the, the parking areas that would accommodate the vehicles for uh, for the maintenance building, the dog walkers, um, the employees, for the rental buildings, uh, the playground areas. And we, I think there's a total of 81 parking spaces that would be accommodated. Next category is uh, improved elderly and handicapped accessibility. We've identified a couple areas. Uh, one, we were asked by the commission to see if we could provide better access uh, from the office's quarters down to where the parade ground is, which is down here. And it was simply a matter of, um, you know, traversing the slope rather than, this is an existing walk that is perpendicular to the slope and it's very steep and very dangerous. So this would be a, a, a much more gentle um, gradient by traversing the slope and it would connect to, this is, these are the tennis courts here, and there would be an opportunity to um, to do some paving around the drink, uh, the uh, the water fountain. And then the second area is Kitty's Point. Again, there's um, um, you know it's a this is a very popular observation point. It has excellent views out to Casco Bay, um, but there's no accessibility. There's no um, uh, there's no way that a, uh, a disability person can access Kitty's Point. So we provided a couple handicapped parking spaces in this location and then an ADA compliant walkway that would traverse the slope and come up to the uh, interpretive panels. Uh, safety concerns. Uh, there are Cliff Walk and Battery, battery uh, Garish Shed. Uh, there are several locations along the cliff walk that, in our opinion, are, are very dangerous. Uh, most of them are in areas where there are existing benches. Um, you know, this is an area where there's it's probably a, a 30 or 40 foot, you know, drop off. So I think that, you know, there are uh, areas that ought to be looked at and uh, recommendations given for um, you know, more of a protection of these, of these uh, areas, especially near the sitting areas. And then the, the uh, old concrete shed at the Battery Garish uh, is a safety hazard in our, in our opinion and should be removed. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, steel reinforcing sharp edges uh, that present a safety hazard. Restoration of eroded areas. Uh, there are a few areas uh, throughout the fort that uh, uh, this happens to be uh, a walkway that people have, have developed uh, coming down from uh, the guarded mansion and as a result erosion occurs uh, so those areas need to be addressed. Um, is, uh, there's severe erosion along the cliff walk um, heading down to the ocean. Potential improvement opportunities. Um, there are five areas that we have, um, that we're showing you this evening. The first area is the picnic shelter, uh, or the uh, picnic shelter, the, uh, um, the picnic area at Ship Cove. This is the beach at Ship Cove. There's an existing concrete foundation uh, with a concrete slab which is has deteriorated, it's cracking, and but it's this area is very heavily used um, with 
by people who picnic. Um, another area, um, you know, these, these, uh, the portalettes are uh, throughout the fort, and this particular one by the headlight, this is the, as people park in the central parking area and walk down to the Portland headlight, this is sort of the first thing that they, they, they look at, and I think that there, there may be a better opportunity to, to do a, a better looking fence around the portal lights. This is the, um, the former entrance, the chain link fence at the former entrance. Again, um, maybe picking up on the fence that has, is used at the main entrance, duplicating that in areas like this that are highly visible. This is the central parking area. This is where uh, most all of the visitors come and park to head down to the Portland Headlight. Uh, currently, it's, it's sort of a wide open uh, expanse of gravel. There is a landscaped island in the middle, or a grass island in the middle, um, but it's, it's pretty barren, and I think there's a lot of opportunities to uh, improve this area. So this is just a simple little uh, landscape plan, planting plan that shows a, a series of trees around the perimeter and in the middle of the parking area that would make a, a huge difference. Uh, and this is something small, but it's uh, just another little area in the fort that uh, needs improvement. This area near the shipwreck sign is very heavily used um, by uh, guests and visitors. And uh, it's just a matter of taking some pavers and placing them in this um, bare area. Restoration of existing structures and site features. Um, the central power station. Now we've mentioned uh, on this slide the guarded mansion, the battery blare, and the bleachers. And those three items uh, were, we really didn't focus on these, on those three items. Uh, there have been reports done uh, for the guarded mansion, the battery blare, and the bleachers, and recommendations have been made, uh, but that really wasn't our focus. Uh, the central power station is the first structure. Uh, as you enter the fort on the right, um, it's uh, in pretty rough shape, and our recommendation is to uh, make a structural uh, recommendation um, and just to prevent it from getting any worse than, than what it is now. Uh, this is the guarded mansion, battery blare, and the bleachers. And group use facilities, uh, we were asked by the commission to take a look at possible sites for a second picnic shelter. Uh, we came up with a couple different options. One option A uh, would be located on the, uh, this is the large open area that is used for the overflow parking above the parade grounds. Um, and uh, as you can see, that's, you know, it's, it's very open. This is the upper terrace. This is the old firehouse here. And although it is a fair distance from the ocean, it has excellent views out to uh, Ram Island Light. Uh, so the plan would be to uh, place a picnic shelter in that location. These are the bleachers here. Um, and these, this area would be used for overflow parking. Um, and although this would be overlooking over the parking area, it's, it's uh, a good four or five feet above the, this grade here. So that, that's one option. Uh, another option is in the green, which is the large area out by the pole and headlight. There's a site up in the woods here uh, that would offer a suitable site for a picnic shelter. Um, which is located here. Um, it's, this is the multi-purpose field. This would be the proposed picnic shelter. Um, excellent views out to the water in this direction here. And then finally, uh, park maintenance. And the main one that we're recommendation, recommending is the removal of invasive plant material. And uh, this is a photograph of the cliff walk uh, this happens to be the site of the cliffside site, which is, has now been cleared, but you can see 
the amount of invasives that uh, were there and, and you know, it's, this is just as bad as you continue down Cliff Walk. Um, a, a big effort by the Arboretum Committee um, is, is ongoing and um, uh, will address a lot of the removal of the invasives um, in the future. So uh, that pretty well concludes. I know it was pretty lengthy, um, and we're anxious to, to uh, listen to the public. Um, so, yeah, and you know, at, at your leisure, uh, we've, we've displayed some graphics. This is the aerial survey. These are um, a couple boards that we have prepared that show photographs of existing conditions and, and pro our proposed sketches. And this is a copy of the draft Arboretum Master Plan. Okay, John, thank you very much. Betsy, Bob? Okay, as you can see, there's an awful lot to digest. Um, a lot of material in a relatively short period of time. Some terrific ideas. Um, you know, now we need to proceed and see what the responses are from uh, residents and, and other visitors to the fort. And um, so this is your opportunity to give us your input. And we'd welcome that. Um, I would ask that people step up to the podium, uh, give your name and your address, and uh, we'd like to try to limit the comments to three minutes, if possible, just to be respectful of uh, having everybody have an opportunity to, to speak. And um, if you choose not to, then um, we are available. There were email addresses up there, so we can be contacted through Bob Malley or through the town website, and ideas can be uh, proposed to us in that way. So I would now invite anybody who would like to comment, please do. Uh, yes, thank you very much. My name is uh, uh, Jack Sears, and I live at 24 Waterhouse Court in Cape Elizabeth. I, uh, I'm part of two of the interest groups that, uh, that Mr. Mitchell mentioned. I've uh, for a number of years served on the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, uh, Charitable Foundation, excuse me, in the past, and uh, I'm, I've been, uh, I'm not now, but I have been in the past, and I am somebody who walks the fort with my dogs every day for, almost every day for the last uh, 15 years or so. And uh, I, 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 I very much appreciate everybody's time and effort in this. Uh, I, I, you know, having been involved in some of these things, I always like to start by thanking everybody for their, their time and, and participation because I, I know how much time it can take. And indeed, the chairman's right. I think there were an awful lot of very, very uh, good uh, recommendations. And I, I've really just a, a couple of things uh, that come to mind, and I, I realize Mr. Mitchell said that uh, he was only highlighting a couple of points, and so perhaps it's addressed in the, in the more complete recommendations. One of the early PowerPoint uh, uh, slides talked about uh, having um, water fountains for uh, public and pets, and um, it, uh, that's one of the issues that I think has been brought up by, by the dog walking group, and we've talked about it because I've noticed actually plan B where you have the picnic table down there near the green. Uh, right, right in that place there is a hose lying on the ground. The water comes out there which is apparently used to hook up the sprinkler system for the beach to beacon race that they run for just a couple of weeks. So there's already water there and it would just be a very, very convenient place whether or not the picnic shelter goes there or whether or not a second picnic shelter goes anyway, that's a very, very convenient place to, to have a fountain for both people and pets. And it's already, it's already there, so it would be quite a simple matter to put a fountain in, I think. And I think the idea of the path for the, the loop coming back from the old entrance, back by the double A field through back to the barn, uh, is, is a good idea. There, there's already... Uh, Bob Malley, I gather, has already uh, been very, very helpful in, in putting a couple of uh, 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 locks on the gates that kept 
dogs in that off-leash area from going out into the road at the request of the dog people. So it's people that has, had been hesitant to take the dogs up there, now they can because they don't have to worry about the dogs running out uh, and bothering traffic or, the, or endangering people. And so having a path that comes back to that starting point uh, uh, would be very good. And I guess I would note that they, the multi-purpose field was used an awful lot by the uh, people walking their dogs. And frequently they would ask people to stay off while they, while they reconditioned the field and everybody's, I think, cooperated with that. But it's kind of caused the, the dog walkers to migrate down around the corner to that, that green area. And again, uh, Mr. Malley and the people have been very helpful to put a couple of picnic tables down there for the dog walkers because we tend to congregate there in the morning or late afternoon or whatever. But I think that the, the, the plan looks to, to me very, very good. I appreciate everybody's effort. I just wanted to put in that little thing about the, the water for the people and pets. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sears. Anybody else like to comment? It's got to be one more. <laughs> okay, well, um, I guess if everyone has said what they want to say, and as I said before, you're able to uh, email comments in. Um, Bob Malley is the Director of Public Works, and he's the staff person who works with our committee in a very capable manner, I would add. Um, so if you would like to email uh, Bob, then he can... Uh, forward the information on to us and, and to uh, John and his team. So um, I guess if there's nothing more, um, I would just... Could remain afterwards. But, pardon me? We could remain afterwards. Can yeah, I mean, yes, and that's true. We can remain afterwards, and if people would like to just come up and speak with us. Um, so you tell us the, how does the law? Um, well, the plan is to hopefully have this completed by the end of the year by December, and then it would uh, go to the town council uh, for the town council's blessing, and at that point, um, then I guess it becomes the operative master plan for the fort until the next update or the next master plan is done. Um, what we're going to have to do, as you can imagine, or as you can see, a lot of this involves funding. And um, so one of the things we'll have to do is to try to prioritize what we're able to do with the funding that's available to accomplish it. Some of the things that, some of the initiatives such as the Arboretum have been uh, privately funded and, and will continue to be privately funded, including an endowment uh, for the maintenance of the Arboretum sites as they evolve. The town is <coughs> funding some of the uh, maintenance and capital improvements uh, within the fort and uh, the Charitable Foundation is working diligently to, to try to create new avenues, uh, grants, and things of that sort that, that might facilitate some of these things happening. But um, the plan is to hopefully have it to the Town Council by January. Anything else? Okay, well, I would just thank you very much for your interest and for your time and for your thoughts. And um, we'll be around to speak with you if you'd like to, uh, you know, stay for a few minutes. And otherwise, uh, maybe we'll hear from you in other ways. And thank you very much again. <laughs>